called Two Things You Don't Talk About at Dinner, and those two things are religion and politics, of course, and it is set at an annual Passover Seder, and the elephant in the room at this particular Seder is the Israeli-Palestinian situation, and uh, the Seder gradually, gradually, gradually unravels over the course of the evening. I'm inspired by what I read in the paper, what I see in the world. Uh, in this particular case, I do have a very good friend who had an annual Passover Seder, and she is very uh, pro-Israel, and she has a very old friend who was often at that Seder, an Arab-American, who is pro-Palestine. And I would watch them year after year avoid, 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 and very often drama comes from that what if. And so my what if in this situation was, what if they kind of got into it? I do consider it a political play because there is political discussion in the play. It's, it's a dinner table. I don't know what your dinner table is like. At my dinner table at many, politics and religion come up no matter how we try to avoid them. There is no moment in the play when the politics of the play are not completely bound up with the personal passions. Nobody's politics come from a place of, they don't come from here. They, they all come from here and here. I'm drawn to the play because it doesn't have a pulpit to stand on and say, this is what is right politically or from a religious point of view. But it does expose often how sometimes thoughtful, more often emotional we are in our convictions about religion and politics. And that's what's really exciting to me, is that the play, she has a great sense of humor, but she doesn't make fun of the people, the characters in her play. I think comedy relaxes people, I think it opens them up, and uh, they're more willing to entertain uh, some of the ideas that are back and forth from all 12, 13 characters because they are laughing. I don't know how not to. There's an unwillingness for most of us to consider the other side. Uh, and that's true, I believe that's equally true with both sides of the political landscape oh, yeah. today. It's not like there's one side that's unwilling, the other side is suddenly willing. Uh, and it's very hard for us to move forward because we can't even talk about these discussions now. And it's become kind of this public process of posturing, which unfortunately is also what happens with families. Because you get home, or you get with your families and friends, and you, you, you regress at times. <laughs> We've become very uh, polarized. I think the theater is the perfect place to do it. I always think of it as we are gathering together quietly after work in the dark to consider something together. And there is an anonymity uh, to that, and there's also uh, a very magical shared experience to that. I actually don't think the theater, by and large, should provide answers to the questions. Now, I do think the theater can encompass a lot of different viewpoints. So, this season we did a play, American Night, and we're doing two things you don't talk about. American Night about an illegal immigrant trying to, well, no, he's actually got a green card, but he's trying to get his, take his American history test. What was surprising to me is that play was not more controversial, actually, with our audiences. So. When I started the season, I couldn't predict to you which one would be controversial, but both were about fundamental things going on in our world today. And we're really about you know, creating memorable moments that people will talk about and remember and think about throughout their lives. It could be you know, the death of Hamlet. It could be the particular argument or the, the scene between, at the end of the play between the husband and wife that are hosting the Seder. Uh, these moments that are kind of indelible in us. We're trying to do that. At the same time, we're trying to be relevant, and of course, we're trying to be entertaining. But we're, try we're, we're trying to do all three things at once. Uh, not necessarily in the same play, but every season needs to be both thought-provoking and engaging and entertaining. We don't want to tell people what to think. 
We do want to throw questions out, and we do want to show them a different view of the world that they wouldn't have ordinarily seen. I want them to take away the uh, invitation, the possibility of hearing each other's stories, of hearing the other side. So it is about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but it's also about, you know, the evangelical Christian versus the uh, liberal Jewish point of view versus the uh, more pro-Israeli point of view versus the young guy that wants to be a Buddhist yes. versus the daughter that is bulimic. So it's not, it's not simply a play about that issue. It's right. a play about so many different issues right. kind of colliding at once.